Hello everyone and welcome to this special webinar. It's going to be a quick one today on the new director ID. I'm getting a few emails from people wanting to know all about it because it's a new thing. And like all new things, no one really knows the, uh, the details. So I thought I'd do this quick uh, webinar just to explain to people what this new director ID is. And basically it's for all company directors. So pretty much everyone who's probably watching this video needs to do something about it. Just really quickly, normal disclaimer to make sure you get your own independent advice. Uh, I'm Derek Nolan, I'm the owner of 12 Chartered Accountants, but you probably already know that. Um, just really quickly, so the director ID, it's brand new. It's been talked about for a little while, but now it's finally become real. And what it's all about is pretty much every director needs to have a director ID. And it's basically going to have your identity on it. So ASIC and the tax office and another a number of other institutions will be able to use this director ID to be able to identify you much easier. Um, you'll sort of need this director ID to sort of do anything in the future. Now, now I sort of get where it's coming from, particularly from ASIC because a few times I've, um, I've looked, uh, done a search for a particular client and um, like for example, there could be uh, a Derek Nolan and you search and there's a number of Derek Nolans who are directors of um, different companies. So obviously you need to know what the date of birth is because there could be um, different Derek Nolans with different date of birth or, or they could even be the same, um, there could be other people with the same date of birth, for example, so you need Derek Craig Nolan. But even then, there could be another Derek Craig Nolan, who knows, or, and sometimes there's a Derek C Nolan, sometimes there's a, just a Derek Nolan, are they the same person, all this sort of stuff. So what they decide to move to is to sort of give everyone an ID number, a bit like a tax file number, but to use for other things besides income tax. So what'll happen in the future, for you to do anything, if you're a director of a company, you need to quote your director ID um, pretty much whenever you want to do things. So we'll go through a, a few examples of why that's going to be happening. So why do you need, well, well, because the law says you need to. That's pretty much it. Like it would have been uh, okay not to, to require them, but, but basically they're, uh, they're making us all do it. Now what they're saying is to stop false and fraudulent director activities. And what they mean there is pretty much people who are becoming directors of companies, the companies are being wound up and those companies are moving into new companies and continuing on. They're called like Phoenix arrangements where people sort of wind up their company and they go and start another company. And just to try and track that down a little bit, um, they, that's why they're bringing the ID in. Really, I, I sort of got a different view on it. And it's really, it is a move to Big Brother. And the, the government's trying to make sure that they're tracking people's movements a lot better. We'll go to uh, how it actually works in a second, but you'll sort of see how a lot of things are now being linked with each other. And it'll be a, very difficult for people to be able to do things without providing some form of identification through a director's ID. On the other side though, of course, it's much easier for the government, ASIC, tax office to basically cancel you by just canceling your director ID as well. So that's something that we need to uh, be very wary of. Now who needs this director ID? Well, pretty much if you're a director of a company. There's also an Australian, a registered Australian body, not a few of those, um, and some foreign companies. but pretty much if you're a director of a normal run-of-the-mill company, now that could be a company which is a, um, uh, a trustee of a superannuation fund, trustee of a family trust, pretty much any company that's registered with ASIC and you're a director of it, you will need to get an ID. Now the downside is that you're going to have to do it yourself. Um, unfortunately I'd love to be able to help people, but I can't. So everyone who's watching this and they're a director of a company, they need to go and set up their own director ID themselves. And this is this can be a little bit annoying sometimes, particularly when there's a few companies out there that's got two directors, you know, husband and wife type arrangements and and um, 
you need to go and do it for both. That's just the way it is. Now, you don't need a director if you're just a company secretary. Mind you, a lot of my clients, because every company needs to have a company secretary, usually the director is also the company secretary as well. Now, obviously, you don't need to be uh, have a director ID if you don't have a company. If you're just running your business as a sole trader or a partnership, um, even if you're running through a trust and the, you're the trustee of the trust, not a company. Um, the other thing too, if you you might call yourself a director, but you're not actually a real director under the Corporations Act, you might just be a, a title of um, of your employment, um, or if you're an a director of an unincorporated association, for example, a sporting organization or the school PMC or something like that. A lot of those are not required, even though you may be, have your official title as a director. Now, this is not to be confused uh, for a shareholder because with ASIC, when you set up a company, there's pretty much three things you need to do. One's a director, one's a secretary, and the other one you need to have a shareholder. There's a lot of people out there who are watching this who are only directors, uh, only shareholders or only directors. Most people are probably both, but just to make sure that if you're only a shareholder, you won't require a director ID. All right, so this is the important thing is when do you need to apply? I'm getting a number of clients now who are getting emails um, from their lawyers and from other people saying, you need to get a director's ID. So, so this is the important dates. So if you're already a director, then you're probably, because you're watching this, uh, already a director. So the key date with when this came in was the 31st of October, 2021. So if you're a director already before that date, you don't have to get an ID until the 30th of November, 2022. So about a year you've got to, um, to get your director ID. So that's great. However, if you become a director between the 1st of November and the 4th of April, you need to go and get your director ID within 28 days of your appointment. So this is even if you are a director of a company already, you can go and become a director of another company. Normally when you set up a brand new company or you go and buy a company or for some other reason. So that requires you to go and get your director ID. And I saw, as I said before, you only ever get one ID. So, and that becomes yours, a bit like a tax file number or an ABN number. So that's important. There'll be plenty of people who are just directors of you know, a company and probably unlikely that they will become a director of any other companies. So they have until the 30th of November. For everyone else, and I, set, I think I set up a couple of companies today, those people, because today's um, November, those people now have 28 days to go and get their document or their director ID and report that back to me so I can fill in the details uh, with ASIC. And then from the 5th of April next year, you need to get your director ID before you become a director. So same thing, after the 5th of April, you may already be a director of, an, of a company and you know you've got until the 30th of November to get your ID, but you go, oh no, I want to set up a new company or I want to become a director of a my brother's company or something like that. Before you do that, you need to have your ID. I know that's going to be a pain in the butt for some people because next year, I just know someone's going to be quickly, quick, Derek, get me a company, get me a company. And I'll say, well, I can't appoint you as a director unless you've got a director ID. How do I get one of those? Well, go and watch this video. Um, so they're the important dates. You know, pause the video and have a look at those because uh, at the moment, one of those at least will apply to you. Okay, so how do you get a director ID? Well, it's not as easy as you first think. Now, the first thing you need to do is to need to set up a MyGov ID. This is, this is what the, I guess, um, the government has decided to do to verify people's identity electronically. Now, as a tax agent, I've had to have a MyGov ID for a few years now. 
and that's pretty much the only reason I need it um, to verify my identity when I log into my client's um, tax information on the tax office website. But this is going to become more and more common and where people are going to have to use the MyGov ID digital verification more and more. So everyone's going to have to get used to it. Now the really important thing, oh and by the way, what the MyGov ID is just an app. It's just a, 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 an app that you download onto your phone. That's all it is. And I'll go through the process of setting it up in a minute, but that's all it is. So for, for me, when I when I want to log into some a client's um, information on the tax portal, I need to go to my phone and open up my MyGov ID. Put my, um, my um, password in. Then when I go into the tax portal, I then get a code sent to my phone and I've got to put that code in and hit enter and then it lets me go into the tax portal. So that's sort of what you're going to have to do is what, what the MyGov ID is, just a digital verification of your ID. Not to be confused in any way with MyGov, okay? I wish they didn't use the same terminology, but they have. MyGov ID is not related to the MyGov account in any way. If you get nothing else from this webinar, that's what you got to get out of it. Don't, because a lot of people I've always said to, oh, you need to set up a MyGov ID. And they go, yep, I've already got a MyGov account. I went, no, it's a MyGov ID account. Yep, Derek, that's the one, that's the one I've got. So it's not. So, because what the MyGov is, that's an account, it's a, it's a web page. you go in there and you put all your details and it's linked to Centrelink and a few other things like that. Nothing to do with the MyGov ID. All the MyGov ID is just an identity verification process. That's all it is. So what you need to do is you need to go to www.mygovid.gov.au forward slash setup. You go there and you basically go through the process of setting up your, um, your MyGov ID. Now when you go there, they ask some basic questions. Name, rank and serial number. And depending on the information then you give them, it gives you a different standard of identity. So when you first go and you're going for a general, which will just be your name and maybe your date of birth and a few things like that. Now the general um, level of identity is not good enough for anything. What you need to do is have at least what they call the standard identity strength. There'll be a few things that you'll have to do in the future which you'll need to have a high uh, identity strength or a strong identity strength. strength. So when you go into the MyGov ID website, they'll ask you for some of these information, like driver's license, passport, birth certificate, citizenship certificate, Medicare card, and things like that. I remember what I did, I think I needed two of those things. So the driver's license and the Medicare card. So the process will be you download it and you need to take a photo of it. Like take a photo of your Medicare card, put all the details in it, what number you are and things like that, and then submit it. Same thing for your driver's license, take a photo of it, put your driver's license, and then it sort of goes into, I know, the web and verifies it. So it sort of comes back pretty much straight away with your verification. So that's the first thing you need to do. And I'll obviously you'll ask for a password. You need to have a certain strength and all that sort of stuff. So that's what you need to do to have at least a standard identity strength um, before you can go any further. So that's the main thing you need to do is to set up on your phone to have the MyGov ID. Now, step two then is to go into the ABRS website. I think it's just www.abrs.gov.au. Um, and on there, and you've probably never been there before, I've never been there before, it's pretty much going to be identity place for all government bodies. Where, and it's going to be a shared information, it's, again, it's, it's Australia's clearly moving down the path of 
I'm not going to say a communist society, but but it's something that's not looking that it's uh, as free as you think. Um, because this information is going to be available to pretty much any government agency, particularly co when you realize coinciding with the single touch payroll phase two, which is coming in January, there's going to be a lot of information being shared amongst different government organizations. So this is the start of it, unfortunately. Anyhow, so the next thing is you need to go into the ABRS website and click on apply now. I think it comes up as uh, director ID, apply now. And once you do that, you put your, your details in, and of course, you need to then get a verification code back on your phone. So that's when you go, all right, you put your details in, you'll get something on your phone, you put your password in, and you get a password, and you click it, and it allows you to go further. That's what the ID is all about. The government ID is not going to get you your director ID. You know, it's got ID in it. I know it's very confusing. You need to go to the ABRS website to get your director ID. You're just using the MyGov ID as a verification method. And as you'll find, as years go by, you'll be using this more and more and more. Actually, anyone who um, who is running a business now and has access to their own business portal is probably using the MyGov ID already. Once you get into the ABRS website, you'll be asked to identify yourself again. You'll be asked for two more pieces of documents or document of information to verify your identity. This is different. This is a different process to getting your MyGov ID in the first place. I'll go through a sec with the information that you need to provide. There'll be a number of questions you need to um, answer and then you'll receive your director ID. So those two documents, it's really, it's not, it's not what we just did to set up the government ID. This is the, uh, the ones you need to choose from. And there's pretty much six different document IDs you need to do to verify your identity. And a lot of this, well, pretty much all of it, is coming from the tax office. What's the tax office got to do with anything? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because what the, they've decided is that most people will have some form of identity with the tax office. So they decide to use that identity for you to get your director ID. Now, these are the six things that you need to have. You need to have at least two of these things. The first one is a PAYG payment summary issued probably through the single touch payroll system. At least it's coming up on your MyGov account. The second thing would be to have superannuation account details of whether you've got a self, um, self-managed superannuation fund or an industry fund or anything like that. You need some um, the super fund uh, ABN number and your member account details. The third thing would be your BSB um, bank account details that's on file with the tax office. Usually if you've got a refund in the last few years, that's the account that it would have gone into. It gets a bit tricky though if it's going to your tax agent's um, trust account. Uh, the fourth thing there is a Centrelink payment summary. So this is if you've been receiving any Centrelink payments, you'll have some amount that you received from Centrelink last year. Same with dividends. If you've received any dividends, you'll have an investment reference number on those dividends. And the third and the last thing there is the last notice of assessment given to you by the tax office. You need to put the date and the reference number on that. So Again, pause the video and have a look at this because before you get to this point, you need to have two of those things. And some people will actually struggle to find two of those things. So there's a couple of things there, your notice of assessment, you might be able to have to contact your accountant or contact me to get a copy of your notice of assessment. Well, that's one. A lot of self-employed people may not have a PAYG summary. You should have a super fund, but not everyone. Um, you may have to use your bank account details on the last. Mind you, there's some people that never get a refund. 
Um, so anyhow, there you need two of those six things to verify your identity using the tax office records. You need those things. Once you do that, you fill in all the other details and then you'll be given a director ID number. So this is the way it's all working. You've got the ABRS, which is administering the whole data collection and the verification process. You've got the MyGovID, which is the digital online verification process, which you need to have on your phone as an app. You need to have access, and I think your MyGovID, you need to link that to the tax office to be able to get the information that is required to get the, docu the director ID. And of course, the ASIC is there to use this information and enforce the rules to make sure that everyone's doing it um, when they need to. So the ABRS, the Australian Business Registry Service, didn't know much about it until now. I think everyone who's a director of a company, um, dealing with a tax office, dealing with Medicare, dealing with Centrelink, dealing with anyone pretty much is going to know a fair bit more about it. So it's just a, a word of warning. So anyhow, good luck with everyone trying to get their uh, director ID. Remember, those dates are really important. So I've got a few people like literally today set up a company. Now they've got 28 days to get their document, uh, their director ID um, to report that back to ASIC. I don't know what will happen um, if you don't. They are saying there'll be civil and um, criminal penalties applied. Um, the, the ASIC and the tax office may, um, may issue infringement notices. There could be suspension of your accounts. And th this is what I'm worried about is that everything's now linking like into a, into a MyGov ID account, which can be switched off or your uh, doc director ID will be turned off or, or your, your tax file number or your ABN can be turned off or anything like that. So anyhow, it's pretty important that you uh, make sure you do all this and um, make sure you get it, particularly after the 5th of April next year when you need to have it before you go and become a director of a company. All right, well, hopefully that made it a little bit clearer and um, hopefully there's no problems getting your, um, getting your, your director ID. Uh, so make sure you check out all my other videos, of course. There's always ones up popping up there all the day. And what they say, you know, is smash the, the like button and all that sort of stuff that the cool kids are saying. So, all right, well, thanks very much for, um, for watching. Um, thank you very much and uh, goodbye for now.